Pathpilot Quick Tips, Robot Edition. Today we're going to talk about how to wire up a digital input to the ZA6 robot. So, uh, a few things you're going to need. An M12 connector. This is the uh, style of connector we use for the ZA6's digital inputs. You may need a couple of wiring tools like a wire stripper, wire cutter, a small screwdriver and of course uh, some type of switch that you want to wire up but uh, this could be a proximity sensor, it could be a toggle switch, a push button, uh, could be a light curtain, could be uh, a safety switch of some other kind. We're just going to show you today how to connect the wires to the appropriate pins and then how to check your work. This push button actually happens to be a push button from our ZA6 robot electrical cabin. It's just a spare that I had lying on the shelf and these industrial push buttons are really cool. They have a universal push button. It goes into a contact block. If you're not familiar with this style, they're really neat. You can get contact blocks that are normally open, meaning if you haven't pressed down the button, there's no connection. The connection happens when you press the button. Or you can get contact blocks that are normally closed. These just snap in the back here like so, which is kind of neat. Now this same switch, I've got a normally open contact block and a normally closed contact block on the same switch. I think that's pretty cool. And then the really neat thing, not that this video happens to be about contact blocks, is that you can get little LED modules so we can make the button light up. An LED module goes right in there and clicks into place. And if we had 24 volts, which we do on the robot's digital input connector, we could actually have the button illuminated which would be cool. But today, we're only going to use the normally open contact block. So all we're going to do today is strip back these two wires, and I'm going to go ahead and wire them up into two of the pins on this connector, but which two, right? So this is the documentation for uh, the ZA6 robot. It's all online. Uh, if you don't already own a robot, you can still come check this out. Um, the nicest thing about it is the search tool is great. So I'm just going to search for schematic, and we'll see what pops up. Electrical schematic, first result. That's great. We have two versions on here, which is the most recent. And uh, I'm just going to look here for the inputs and the outputs. So here we go. We're looking here at digital inputs one and two. So you'll see we have two inputs per connector, right? So one and two share a connector, and pin one goes to 24 volts. Pin 2, digital input 1. Pin 3, 0 volts. Pin 4 goes to digital input 2. So for this, what I'm going to want to do is connect one of my wires to 24 volts, the other wire to digital input number 1. So that's pins 1 and 2 on this little, on this little block here. So this is an M12 connector. M12 because that's the uh, uh, diameter of the fastener itself. So it's an M12 metric connector, very standard in industrial robotics. This happens to be a five pin, and you can see that there's a little orientation tab in there that prevents you from plugging it in upside down or 90 degrees off. The first and most important step, thread your wires through this bit first, otherwise you'll just be redoing all your work. And I'll go ahead and strip these back about a quarter of an inch. These guys just have little screw terminals. So there's a center terminal for ground. We're not going to use that today. And then we've got pins, and they're labeled. And boy, with my aging eyesight, I have a hard time seeing it. Pin number one, pin number two, three, and four. So you get the magnifying glass, you might be able to see. If we were uh, really going all out here, we'd use little wire ferrules on this, and that's what we do at the factory, but uh, for today, just going into pins one and two shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to find pin one, and we'll back the little screw out. And pin two. Now remember, if I'd gone to pin three, it would have given me a short circuit between 12, 24 volts and uh, ground. Thankfully, we do have uh, 
protection on the power supply for this, so it shouldn't damage anything, but try not to connect pins one to pin three. Uh, connecting pin one and pin four through this button would have given us the second digital output on that connector. We could go ahead and close this up. There is a little bit of alignment to this, and so you just have to kind of twist it around until you get it in the right spot. And then we can go ahead and close it up. Okay. I'm going to use this as a, an opportunity to illustrate that each one of these connectors has two input signals on it. Okay. Each one of these output connectors has two outputs on it too. So you see we got two banks of six. That's actually 12 outputs and 12 inputs. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to connect this to this third input connector. Got to get this oriented correctly. There we go. So here we can see when we press, press our button, we can see that input five, which we've plugged into here, is active on the screen. So real quickly, just to demonstrate uh, what we can do with this, I'm going to name this button. And then we will quickly write a program here that, uh, that uses this, OK? So I'll do a new program. And we will jog the machine a little bit. Let's see. Why don't we just go down to go down to 600. All right. So we'll make a new waypoint. We'll call it waypoint one. Sure. And I'm going to go ahead and say I want to add a move to that waypoint, and I want to move um, add a move to all zeros. Save that, and so now button example. So now we have a program that will move. Let me just turn up the speed on this. We have a program now that moves between uh, the all zeros waypoint or the home position and this waypoint that I just taught it. Doesn't do much with the button yet, though, does it? And we'll go ahead in here into uh, our wait screen, and we will wait for our button input to go high. And we'll add that to the program. So what this program now will do, and let's see, we'll, we'll move to the all zeros waypoint, then we'll wait for the button, and then we'll move to the second waypoint. So here we are. The robot's not moving. We take our button. And the robot moves. Waiting for the button. So to recap, I showed you today how to wire up uh, uh, one of our digital inputs on the ZA6 robot, uh, how to find the schematic, how to read the schematic, what pins to connect the inputs to. Should work for anything that acts like a switch. So a proximity sensor, if you've got a 24 volt proximity sensor, you can use the 24 volt supply on the input. Um, obviously any switch, button, toggle, read switch should work just fine for it. Um, I hope, hope this video was informative and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.